Hi, and welcome to the show. I have been continuing on the Raspberry Pi 2 Portable Mark II, as you can see here. Um, I've gotten to a certain point, and I'll just uh, go through everything that I've uh, done so far with you, and some revelations and some conclusions, and uh, where to from here. So if you take a look, I've attempted a sort of a lightning effect on the actual case and uh, just a two-part approach, an undercoat that's flexible and a top coat that's not an enamel coat. And as the bottom coat just uh, finally moves and dries and things into position, it cracks the top coat and gives you that kind of a, a lightning effect, although I got too much of um, the effect. So I have 3D printed a case, as you can probably see. Um, that actually turned out really, really well. I've added a 3D printer to the library and I printed the bottom part of the case in one print, uh, three vertical sections, and just buttered those together. And because the accuracy of the printer, it actually came out very, very well, uh, although I wouldn't do it again, and I'll cover that in a moment. So yeah, that's the uh, top part of the case there. Um, so it didn't turn out too bad. I haven't finished all of the bits and pieces as yet. All right, and the hinges on the back are temporary. Um, that was another one of the learning curves. I printed hinges as a part of the case design, but they weren't strong enough. I, I went too thin a wall material, even though I'm using Polymax PLA, which is fantastic. Um, it wasn't strong enough to be able to uh, hold a, a four mil bolt and use a lock nut in order to be able to give the case some rigidity. So anyway, there's the top part of the case. So as you open up, I've left the keyboard out for the moment. Hopefully you can see that there. And the idea was that this would be your Arduino storage and tools and accessories and so on. And obviously the uh, keyboard sits inside the case like so. Just clips in. And that is still removable. I haven't actually run uh, power from the keyboard. I've left the keyboard running off uh, AAA or AA batteries. Uh, just so that it can be removed if you really find the need. And there's more space in that cavity at the bottom, so I can really put a lot more information, a lot more uh, equipment in there if I can design it right. Okay, so just inside, the general design was pretty much what we talked about last time. I've got the uh, SparkFun board there running to a battery. I've had to use a smaller battery, um, that HDMI cable. Oh, that is a beast of a thing. Those flat HDMI cables, even though they're only 30 or 50 centimetres long, as soon as you need to put a kink or something in them, you, you're stuck with the full height of the cable in different angles all throughout your project. So you can't actually get it to go really where you want, and it doesn't give you um, a space saving at all. It actually ends up, being, um, uh, ends up being a problem when you're trying to organise your space. So I've had to go for a smaller battery just because the slightly larger one wouldn't fit with the cable in there. Uh, so I've ended up putting the driver board in the bottom part of the, part of the case. Helped me make the top part of the case a bit thinner. Um, Raspberry Pi 2, as you would expect, running Ubuntu, running fairly well. The Pololu power regulator. I did change to a 5 amp uh, output power regulator. The one that I had previously was getting just a bit too hot. So I've gone for one of these. Uh, and one thing to note on the power side of it, um, some of you probably already figured it out. Even though I've got four amps going in and I can get anywhere up to four amps coming out to go into the project here, it will only ever charge the battery at one amp. And that's because I set it up to charge at one amp, one and a half is the maximum anyway. This board only provides the power from the battery, not from the mains. The mains will only charge the battery and the project will be powered from the battery. It's not a pass through. That means I can stick four amps in and I'll only ever get one amp going into the battery. If I've got a two amp drawer, the battery's going to go flat even though I've got mains plugged in. So as you can see here, I did eventually tap the positive and negative input from the barrel jack and took it to the output of the power regulator. I took it to the output of the power regulator because the power regulator's got reverse current protection in it. I don't believe the SparkFun board does. So if I put five volts at the start of the power regulator, which kinds of makes sense, I'd actually be getting a five volt flow back and potentially going into a battery 
that doesn't take five volts and I would cook the battery. So I've connected it to the output of the power regulator. Five volts goes into the project quite easily. The battery's charged at one amp. There's three amps plus going into the project. Everything works nicely. I've had that running for a long time now. So that's one thing I did have to do. Okay, so the idea with this section here was to recess the LCD in the, in the lid a little bit more and put a fascia plate probably up to this end here and something else going around here and the controlling buttons for the LCD uh, just in here. So, and this is the one that I was actually waiting on. This is the IPS display and it's actually really quite a nice display. So let's power that up now. And as you can probably tell, I haven't yet put in a power switch. So that's the uh, display, let's set that up. But there were a number of um, lessons learned apart from the hinges. Uh, the recess that was for the LCD display uh, didn't actually turn out right and therefore I couldn't sit the LCD in there properly. Um, I've just got a couple of pieces of tape holding it in at the moment. But when it's all running and sitting together, set that in there, set that on top, I think it's still powered on, yes it is, put that in there. That is the intended Raspberry Pi to portable. The keyboard, for portability purposes, I actually think the keyboard's too big. And the other thing about the keyboard that I really wanted to cover, even though you can right click with three finger double taps, um, clicking and dragging something is really problematic and it's just not portable. Right, so you look at it like this and close it up, take the Arduino out, right? And the hinges are temporary, they're not actually affixed properly yet. Right, so there's your, your Raspberry Pi 2 portable. Well, you know, Raspberry Pi 2 not so portable. Um, it's easy to use, right, it functions fairly well. So you get lots of functionality out of, out of it and the hinges can be tightened so your lid doesn't just fall down all the time. Um, but yeah, keyboard too big. I need a smaller keyboard, I believe, and something with better clickability. Um, proper physical buttons or just the ability to just work a bit nicer, especially in a, an Ubuntu or a Windowsy kind of environment. One other design characteristic aside from the hinges and the miscalculation for the Arduino holder and for the um, LCD recess, one other design flaw that I didn't like or consideration that I didn't take into account is the small chamfering on the lid here uh, around the edges, wanted to be able to give it a slightly curved look in order to be able to hide some of the dimensions because it's physically quite large. So that part there, uh, not enough beveling, not enough chamfering on the edges and obviously the free 3D printer is able to be able to produce uh, any variation, draw it up in CAD. And so I'll be redoing the lid uh, redoing the lid one because the, the beveling is insufficient and two because I didn't allow enough space to fit that LCD in properly and the Arduino storage compartment and other peripherals that would, could be stored in this um, section over here. Uh, not the right dimensions, it's not the right setup. Um, so aside from that, I think that's covered everything. The keyboard, I think too big. The power distribution, so the input for the barrel jack, uh, just need to be mindful that it doesn't provide the full um, four amps at five volts going through, it only provides power from the battery, so you need to tap off the barrel jack and put it into your project. The Pololu power regulator, the initial one that I was using, this one here, um, doesn't quite put out enough current, and as a result was getting pretty warm on maximum draw. Um, the cable, the HDMI cable, uh, real problem. So I'll be getting different kind of cable in order to be able to hook everything up on the next iteration of this. I'm going to redo it. Um, one of the main features that I really, really wanted was the backlight in the keyboard. Um, you probably remember I've demonstrated this in a previous video. So the keyboarding has a, a backlight and it's nice. It's really, really quite decent to use in a low light environment. But if I go for a, a Rye keyboard, um, which has similar functionality to this one, 
it's 50 millimeters um, shorter and it's about 15 to 20 millimeters um, narrower uh, with roughly the same thickness doesn't have backlighting but I think it's going to give me the dimensions that I really really want so when that one arrives I'm going to redo this again and we'll have mark three so uh, yeah thanks for joining me and I hope you'll uh, join me again when I get around to doing mark three of this so thanks very much for joining me and watching the show subscribers are always welcome so feel free to subscribe that would be great and I hope you'll join me again next week